afternoon. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our live event. We are talking about photography from around the world with Peace Boat. And today we have very special friends with us, colleagues, photographers, and guests sharing their inspiring stories with us from around the world. So thank you so much for joining us. We are here today talking about the images of Peace Boat and what really is like image shares a thousand words. And that's today. And we're going to start with our colleague Stacy, who's with us. Um, Stacy and I were on our first voyage together, and this is going to be the first showcase of some of his beautiful images. So, everybody, please welcome Stacy Hughes for the first show. All right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, Okay, so I think we have uh, some slides coming up here, but um, in um, uh, to give you a bit of an introduction, um, I uh, my first uh, experience with Peace Boat was back in two thousand one, um, and I ended up working as a staff with Peace Boat um, for uh, about uh, eight or ten years, and um, that Peace Boat experience really influenced uh, what I have moved on to do with my life and work after that, which is um, in international uh, education programming um, and also uh, um, mediation and uh, work um, dealing with violence. So um, photography was a part of my work in Peace Boat. And so that's why uh, I'm here today to share that with you all. <laughs> Thank you. And I think, uh, no, for sure. Stacy, it was like my first voyage on Peace Boat. Like, Stacy had the best slideshows, the most amazing experiences. And I was like, wow. Um, Peace Boat is an amazing experience when you're traveling, but when you see it through the photos and through the eyes of someone else, also really inspires you. So, we're really excited to like, see some of your photos and just uh, talk about the experience of traveling and seeing those um, inspiring moments through the images that you all have captured. So, we're going to bring this up in a second. Um, and this is Stacy. Also, Stacy's a big surfer, so this is really important. <laughs> um, images of the ocean, and Stacy, here you go with your photos. It's the first shot. <laughs> yes, yes, that is. I'm sorry, I, I uh, there was a little glitch there. Okay, so um, we'll dive right in then. Um, so, uh, I, I. You know, my experience with Peace Boat was enormous, and there was a lot to learn from that, um, a lot to take away from that. So uh, I, it was challenging to narrow this down to a couple key points, but um, I wanted to pinpoint some of the most important things that I learned. Um, and these are these are the kind of uh, experiences that somebody can have on peace on a on a Peace Boat voyage or um, working with Peace Boat. And these, uh, to me, illustrate why Peace Boat really matters, um, the value that Peace Boat brings to the world. Um, and so this first one uh, is a picture of me in Russia in 2001. Um, this was like in the summer, I think. And the reason this particular image is important is because this is when it really um, struck me that um, so let's say like this, I was walking along and uh, suddenly kind of got approached by these, um, by this group of kids. And this, you know, while I was in Russia, I had, I was uh, remembering that this is the country that I always grew up thinking I'd go to war with. And, you know, that sounded like fun and, you know, loved Rambo and Top Gun and all those things. Um, but it really struck me when I first kind of encountered this group of kids that this is, that I realized that this is who I had, um, thought that I would be fighting against one day and maybe killing and, and those kind of things. Um, and so that really um, led to a deep change uh, in my mind um, about the impressions that I have about the world versus the reality um, that is out there. And so that was, that was a first experience. Um, let's go to the next slide. So, this slide here is um it's actually a picture of a protest um being held in baghdad in february of 2003 so anybody who can remember that far back knows that that was um about one month before the uh the iraq war started or the the second or the third or whatever iteration you know however you look at those things but um uh the current or the most recent iraq war started um and so 
I went there uh, with a small peace boat delegation um, to learn more about the conditions in Iraq and um, find people who could, who we could work with because we all knew that the war was going to begin. Um, and what really struck me though is um, that I, you know, I, I showed up in Iraq and here I am an American and we all know what my country is going to do to their country. And, you know, I don't know what it could be at that point. We didn't really know, but it was, you know, 10 days or two weeks or something like that, three weeks. Um, and I never one single time encountered any kind of hate or ill will or anything like that. Rather, um, the sentiment that I received again and again and again was thank you for coming to ask us for our side of the story and not you know, the government side of the story or Saddam Hussein's side of the story per se, but talking with people um, whose lives were about to get rearranged. Um, and so that also had a tremendous impact on um, we, you know, especially Americans are kind of caught up with this idea that a lot of the world doesn't like us and this anti-American stuff. And so um, it became a little bit of a theme of my experience as well go to those places and see, is that the case? Are those anti-Americans um, really out there? Um, and so uh, surprisingly or not, I've found, I have yet to find uh, that uh, to, e to exist. There are a lot of people who are really angry about say US policy and US intervention and all these kind of things. But there's, I, I think practically speaking, there is no such thing as anti-Americanism in itself. So. It's a very important um, thing for an American to learn. Um, so what, what's next there? So I think next up we have, um, so next up what should be appearing here is a picture of, uh, yes, perfect. Um, and I'm wondering if there was a picture just before this. Yes, that's the one. Um, so uh, hopefully some folks out there will recognize that this is in Cape Town, um, South Africa. This was uh, a study group. Um, I think this was back in 2004, but this was a, a study group of, um, you know, uh, a group of people from Peace Boat. And we went to learn about uh, basically nonviolence work. And the place we went was to Polesmore Prison. Um, and there we met with juvenile and adult offenders. And we also met with uh, a couple of uh, these significant, um, a couple of these fellows who were up in the front of the group there. Um, they had been um, leaders of the South African prison gangs at one point. And they had gone through a lot of nonviolence work. Um, they had since left prison. And um, this is, so this was the first time for me to, um, uh, en encounter uh, people in prison um, or the prison context and learn about people's capacity to change um, what we, you know, who we think they are versus what actually people are um, able to become. Um, and what, we, uh, let's see the next picture there. And so this is a good example of the kind of experience that um, you can have on Peace Boat, which is, in this case, uh, uh, a group of the um, primarily Japanese passengers, but there were also some of the international participants, um, volunteer language teachers, stuff like that, who joined. And we're inside, um, it was like the juvenile detention center or the, the youth prison component of this prison. And we're just in there hanging out with um, the young kids, but uh, they had, you know, um, who'd been going through this, uh, this nonviolence work. And so that was a tremendous experience for um, the participants and myself uh, and um, uh, has led to um, the last uh, eight years of my life, uh, part of my work being something that I do primarily in prison. Um, it's called the Alternatives to Violence Project. So this was, um, this was kind of where that began. Um, so what comes next here? In that theme of, um, you know, going and looking for your enemies and finding that maybe the reality is not what you thought it was and looking at the capacity for people to change, this picture continues on that. Um, it's a picture of a uh, 
of residents of Nanjing, China, and one of the Japanese soldiers who was part of the occupation um, and what is uh, sometimes called the massacre or the rape of Nanjing. Um, I think that was in uh, December of 1937. And so this was a sort of a ceremony of reconciliation between, not between the governments, but between the people, um, tremendously important. And so this then furthered my understanding of what is possible, of, of what is possible between people who have um, been through very hard experiences with each other. Um, and then what's next after this? Another example of that, uh, you know, again, this is um, uh, an, an example of one of the very important projects that Peace Boat does. Um, in the middle of the picture there, you see, uh, well, off to, the, off to the right, you see um, somebody who's, who is a hibakusha, uh, you're sort of the original um, survivor of either Hiroshima or Nagasaki. And in the middle of the picture, you see um, the grandson of Harry Truman, who was, of course, the president who dropped the bombs on um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and behind, um, his name is Clifton and behind him is a colleague named Ari. And Ari is actually the grandson of somebody who was on both of the planes that dropped um, those bombs. And so this is, I mean, you know, enormous in terms of its substance and symbolism in terms of um, what does it mean to try to reconcile after, you know, enormous, um, uh, violence has occurred um, and suffering and things like that. And it's, it, it's not necessarily, you know, you don't have to go back and even judge things, but, um, and, and, and make judgment, of, you know, what was right and wrong and all that kind of stuff. And that's, it's a very important thing, but what really appealed to me is this ability for people to come back and connect and just try to explore the question of, well, what is the best thing that we could do now? Or, or how do you feel about what my grandfather did? How do I feel about what you're telling me? And, um, that kind of thing. Um, so what comes next? Okay. Okay. I thought there was one more picture just before this one. Is there, or did that one uh, pop out of the slide deck? Maybe it did. Oh, here we go. This is, um, I just want to share this picture because I think this is a really cool couple. Um, the fellow in the background um, was the former admiral, i.e. chief, of India's navy. So he commanded a massive military force. His wife there, um, and his name is uh, Ramu Ramdas, and his wife there is Lalita Ramdas. She was the former chairperson, chairwoman of Greenpeace International. So talk about two worlds, two different worlds um, coming together um, in the two of them. And so I just thought that was really neat. Uh, an example of who you might be able to meet on Peace Boat. Um, and uh, the last slide. Okay, so coming back to maybe the most important point of why Peace Boat matters is because it gives people an opportunity to, um, to travel the world more importantly, I mean, you can do that all the time, but more importantly, to encounter the people, to really encounter the people in those places, not as a tourist, um, not as a vacation. You're not getting this packaged, you know, you're not getting a packaged uh, stereotype of, you know, um, something exotic or something, you know, what you thought the place had or what the place represents, but you're, you're getting an encounter with real people um, and encountering the issues that they experience and the troubles and you think well maybe is there a way that we can connect on this or i can support and i can also learn something from you um and so of course when we all think of egypt we think of the pyramids but what makes this picture um uh important for me is that in front of the pig the pyramids it puts these uh these young kids and that really just emphasized for me you know never ever ever forget that more important than whatever monument or whatever thing that you went to go see are the people who live there. And so um, this is just a, a, a real kind of nutshell of why Peace Boat impacted me. Um, looking at conflict, looking at the divides between people, looking at how you facilitate reconnecting across those divides how you contrast, well, this is what I think of you, but is that really the case? Um, and how you overcome that. And that's why now my work, um, a big part of my work is, uh, you know, of course, international education programs, but it's also um, 
mediation, it's working, uh, dealing with violence in community and prisons. Um, and so my life course, um, it's not going to make me rich. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I, you know, maybe I can <laughs> complain a little bit about that to my, you know, to peace boat, but, it, um, it, it, um, what I experienced on peace boat really opened my eyes to, uh, a side of the world and reality that I wasn't a, I wasn't aware of and wasn't interested in, and um, and uh, so that's the kind of work that Peace Boat does, and so um, that's it. Thank you, Stacy. No, I was gonna say like my first time on Peace Boat was in 2004, and Stacy was one of the staff on board who really inspired me with his photos and images that he took from all of the voyages. Um, as we know, traveling is one experience, but taking the images and, and keeping that memory and keeping those moments alive is something really important. So, Stacey, I just want to have to say, like, you've been a really strong force in the photography field in Peace Boat. So, thank you so much. Uh, My thanks to Peace Boat. Uh, it's great to have you continue to. <laughs> it's great to have you continue with that work as well. Like the um, Peace Boat knows whenever we need a photographer, we're like. Stacy, so you're you're like the go-to. You're like you're like the best. Um, but it's really important for us also to have images that not only capture the moment, but really the experience and the substance of what Peace was doing. And that's it's very important as a as a photographer and as a documentary like substance of what we do. So thank you so much for that. Um, and today we have also with us James Rodriguez, who was on board with Stacy. I heard <laughs> you guys traveled together. James, a funny story. James, tell me, hi, James, welcome. <laughs> uh, James tells a funny story that, uh, that when he went on board with you, Stacy, he didn't have his uh, his photography equipment wasn't full full on. So um, you guys relied on each other a little bit. A little bit of teamwork going on there when you guys got in the first place. So, um, so one one thing I'd like to. Uh um note here is that uh, i might have had the nicer camera when we first started this stuff off but i did not have the guts that james did to pursue photography as a profession you know following peace boat and so i all of you are going to see um some absolutely tremendous work that james has done yes and i just like to intro james by saying he's been on board the peace boat a few times twice I think is a full voyage, but also just kept involved with Peace Boat. And not only kept involved, but also created his own work, which has been super inspiring to all of us, using his skills that he learned on the Peace Boat to continue his work. So James, please tell us a little about what you're going on right now, what are you doing, and a little bit about what you work. Because um, <laughs> this photo is a little bit deceiving. It looks like a captain, but you know, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's a little bit about your work. Tell us what's, what's happening right now in your in your world. Hi, Emily. Hi, Stacy. It's so, it's so good to be here. Thank you. Thank you for putting this together, for having me. It's, uh, it's bringing back so many memories and emotions, you know. Um, and just to be clear, yeah, Stacy was probably my first, I mean, my first real mentor. And if it wasn't for him, I, I, I wouldn't have uh, continued or, or even started a career in photography. I mean, he's the one that gave me my first chance. Uh, and, and I will get to that eventually. But uh, um, I mean, I'm actually going to talk a little bit more about how Peace Boat um, has worked for me as really a, a launching pad into, into human rights work and photography, documentary photography, which is what I, what I do now. Um, and um, well, I, I just started by saying that I'm from Mexico City, uh, you know, and growing up in like a middle class environment, uh, I was, you know, very aware from a very young age, you know, how there were so many social inequalities and you know, I was always a bit confused about that. And to be honest, like my dad, you know, he would have stacks of magazines, mostly in English, which I couldn't really read. So I ended up using, you know, photography as a way to sort of try to get this window, you know, I mean, this is way in the in the sev late 70s, early 80s. So there was no internet, no, <laughs> none of that, obviously. So for me, photography from a very young age, I realized it was a way to learn, a way to sort of get ideas uh, going. Uh, yeah, thank you. You can you can get start the start the photos going. Uh, eventually, I, I moved to the United States. Went to college there. I, went, I moved to Japan. Uh, you know, just trying to to expand my knowledge on the world. 
And while I was there, I, I joined, um, you know, through Felipe, a, a really close friend who was a Peace Boat staff. He sort of pulled me in. He said, hey, you know, you got to get involved in this. It's a really interesting project. And so I, I did uh, two cruises uh, in a row, the 41st and the 43rd. This was in, in uh, 2003. Uh, the 43rd one was with Stacy. Um, and uh, basically, it just, you know, blew my mind. I learned so much about the world, uh, you know, about issues especially. But this whole time, I had this this big urge to get back to Latin America and somehow be involved in, in what was happening there. So in Peace Boat, uh, there was another staff member called Futoshi, Futoshi Sato, who had who had worked and lived in Guatemala. And he told me, listen, you know, like there's this project in Guatemala that's very interesting that you should really go check out. Um, you know, you work with mostly uh, the, the, you know, like uh, survivors from the war. And, all, and, you know, the, the, the peace of course were just signed a few years ago. So it's a very interesting time and you could maybe put your experience there. So I did, I ended up going back to Guatemala. You know, I signed up, I was accepted with the peace brigades and I was there for a year. And after that, I was a little bit like still confused not to, not to know what to do with my life. And so Stacy said, hey, listen, why don't you come back on the peace boat and, and you know, I'll train you to, so you can, you know, document the trip with photos. And I was like, wow, you know, this is a, sounds like a great opportunity. So I did that. That was in 2005, 2006. And after that, I, I realized, you know what, I, like, I, I'm going to go back to Guatemala and, and use these tools that I learned here as, the, as sort of like the, you know, the staff the photographer and writer and the blog in 2006. Uh, documenting all the human rights issues that I knew were happening in, in Central America, in Guatemala specifically. So I did that. And within a few months, I mean, I just got really lucky. A lot of things started happening. And, uh, you know, I've been here ever since. Then I started uh, pursuing a career a little bit more formally in, um, in photojournalism and documentary photography. And, well, these are some of the, the publications that, that I've had, you know, ever since. Um, you know, it's now been 14 years. And well, like for me, the, the ship itself, you know, has been such an, I mean, it, it was so inspiring to be there, you know, and meet so many people that had so many different cares on, on what was happening on different issues, you know, and, and, and that really, that really inspired me to go on and, and, and pursue what I, what I even had no idea that I wanted to do, you know, which was to be a photographer. Uh, so uh, it, maybe we can now see some of the other images that I, that I, that, that I selected. Um, what happened is that, you know, back then in 2003, I mean, I had a film camera. So basically I had very little film and, you know, I, I would hardly ever take any photos um, on the ship and mostly like when I was on, on the port. Um, and, uh, and then on the third voyage, when I was the, the photographer writer, uh, a friend of ours, uh, he was playing with uh, those poys, those poys, that, that poi game, you know, that New Zealand. And then I, I got too close and my digital camera just flew off. So basically I was left with no camera and, and my job was to photograph the trip. <laughs> so that, you know, I, I, it was crazy because I had to take all these photos with film and we had to scan them and get them on the web. And then many times I asked Stacey, hey, you take the photos and I'll just write the article. But anyhow, these are some of the images that that I look back uh, that I took while while on my trip, and uh, on my on my trips, and and I realize now, you know, looking back, that I was very interested in in uh, in you know in getting close to people and in, in, in trying to understand what was you know what was what was going on, like, and I mean. You know, also looking back, it, it served as a as a great um, training because you know, if I could somehow approach people and speak with them and, and take their photograph without really being able to speak the same language, then you know, back in Latin America, you know, it, it's it's become a lot easier. You know, because I have a an easier way to to really approach and which is really what I mean. You know, photography at the end of the day is just a click, but. There is so much that goes into it uh, before, you know, the research, spending time, you know, cre creating, uh, you know, like having respect for the person and having them accept you, with, you know, what's sometimes known as it's known as, as access, right, within the industry. But it's, you know, it's it's a, it's an ugly word. I don't like it too much, but it really represents a, 
uh, a lot of a lot of work that goes into that. So these are some of the images that that I that I took while while I was um, you know in some of the ports and some of the quick visits that, that we did. And um, and yeah, well, honestly, like I I just can't uh, I you know I, my path went well, you know was was through Peace Boat, you know, if it was, if it would have been for really for the opportunities and, and like I said, the inspiration I, I had there of, uh, you know, I remember seeing a lot of, a lot of in my first and second trips when I was, when I was actually a language teacher on board and I still didn't know what I wanted in my life. I remember seeing a lot of younger Japanese kids who would come on board and be so inspired by a particular, um, you know, guest speaker or a particular issue that they had learned. And then they would go back to Japan and maybe even start their own NGOs or get involved with other NGOs or or you know, pursue research on, on, on X or Y uh, issue. And, and that I think that, you know, subconsciously really eventually, you know, like really inspired me and, and pushed me to, you know what, I should also do do what I, what I need to. Um, and I always thought Stacy was going to be a professional photographer, but I remember him saying, you know what, like, this is just not for me. And he was always so interested in this conflict resolution issue. I remember, I mean, I, I went to Paul's Moore prison as well in one of the trips. And, but, um, you know, I, I guess it's just like, for me, you know, the, like photography is, is sort of an education, you know, or, or, or a way to expand knowledge. And I always feel that if people know certain things, they, you know, they intrinsically will act you know, in a, in a certain way that, you know, I hope it's possible. So that, that's how I see my photography. Anyhow, I'll leave it at that, I, or else I could go on and take up the entire hour. No, James, it's great. Like, you have some of the most amazing photos. And honestly, you and Stacy together, it's like the dream team for Peace Vote <laughs> for all the amazing work that you've done. And not only that, but like you said, it's open the door for you to do like really documentary photography and like really helping social justice, human rights. Like you have shed such a beautiful light on all the stories of the people, not only of Latin America, but around the world, but especially like catching those moments and, um, and really telling the stories of the people that you meet. So I just, I've, Oh, we've always, all of us have been so proud of you and so intrigued by your work because it really tells the stories of the people. And that's what Peace Boat is all about, is meeting people, hearing their stories, and those testimonies become the truth of the history of every country. So you've been amazing at telling that through photography. So thank, thank you so you. much for that. And um, and I just want to mention also, we have your photos and Stacey's photos today. We're doing a giveaway for everybody who's watching. We are going to give at least five photos away. So anyone who wants to make a donation because Peace Boat is doing our crowdfunding campaign right now, anybody who makes a donation in the next hour while we're doing this crowdfunding campaign today and this special online program, we would like to ask you to donate right now. And those of you who make a donation, at least $50 or more, we'll be sending you photos from James and from Stacy. special uh, postcard size for all of you who make a donation. So please do support Peaceful and all of our work. And also, I would like to take some of these images of yours also home. So I might have to make a donation myself <laughs> while we're watching because, um, yeah, now is the time. So please donate online, support Peace Boat, support our colleagues, and also take some beautiful photos with you on the way. We have the GoFundMe site, which you can see here online. And we also have a Facebook online promotional page. So if you're online, whether it's social media or if you're just looking online, check out where GoFundMe and donate today. And you can also take some beautiful photos home with you from our colleagues here online. All right, so that's our GoFundMe page. And I would like to go next also to one of our next colleagues is Sylvia Cantu. She is our Youth for the SDG Scholar from Mexico signing in with us, amazing also scuba diver, photographer, youth leader. Um, tomorrow is also the International Day of Youth. So I so excited to have Sylvia with us. She's gonna be talking a little about her work, her experience on Peace Boat. Uh, she came with us on board from Patagonia, from Argentina to Chile. Sylvia, welcome. Hi everyone. Thank you so much. Um, 
like Emily was saying, I first met Peace Boat or I first joined Peace Boat last year in the spring. And this summer I've been interning with them for Peace Boat US. And we've been planning a lot of events like for the UN World Oceans Day and events such as this one. So I'm really excited to be here and to share a little bit more about my experience with Peace Boat and also my journey as a photographer, as a self-taught photographer. And what I'm going to show you, it's a bit of my journey. So how I started into photography and how that actually um, made me find out about Peace Boat and made me want to go into one of the journeys. So so I started as a photographer, uh, mostly doing stage photography. So a lot of, you know, theater performances, dances. Um, that's where I first met my mentors and just people that were so supportive of my project. And I started to get really comfortable in that area of photography. And that's when I realized, you know, I, I really like how this feels like I want to do this forever. Um, next. And so I, I continued doing a lot of stage photography for maybe four years. And then when I went into college, I realized, OK, I feel very familiarized with photography. This is something that, like I said, I want to keep doing. But what's next? Um, so I uh, I joined uh, Middlebury College um, in 2016. I am currently majoring in political science with a focus on environmental policy and a minor in Portuguese. And I was really fortunate that during my first year in college, I, I got an opportunity to travel around the world for a semester. And during that period, I, I took my camera with me and I said, well, this is not the stage, this is not theater, this is very different from what I'm used to. But I was really excited to test out all these new skills, all these new uh, like scenarios and everything. And the thing that I loved the most about traveling was all the people that I got to meet and all the stories. And all of a sudden, um, photography to me became like a storytelling process. So it wasn't so much about, you know, me taking pictures, editing, editing them and sending them. It was more about doing research, about meeting people and sort of like weaving stories together instead of just me sort of taking ownership of the process. So that's why traveling was so impactful uh, for me. Next. So in college, um, I started to do this thing where I was feeling like my photography, you know, on its own wasn't enough. So I wanted to do more research. I wanted to really take it a step further. And well, I forgot to say this at the beginning, but I'm from Mexico. I'm from Monterrey. And growing up, you know, like like James was saying, there was a lot of things that I experienced and that were always sort of in the back of my mind, but I never knew how to express or how to communicate. So it was really important for me to start getting involved with more of the social context of photography and like photojournalism. So in college, I joined my um, uh, like the school newspaper, like the university newspaper, and I started to do reporting for them. And for example, these pictures are from protest in Chile. Um, next. And then at one point, everything sort of clicked and I was, you know what, Photo photojournalism, it's so amazing. I, I want to do this forever. And then I realized, well, I'm a scuba diver. I am, uh, uh, you know, I'm majoring in environmental policy. And I also, you know, I love photography. I'm still learning, but I, I love this. So I felt like I needed, I, so I felt like I found all these things in common had a way to manifest themselves in conservation photography. So that's when I decided to really focus on that. And I started doing research in my courses for different environmental issues and started to take photos on the side. And then I started adding them to my projects and my professors were like, this is pretty, pretty cool. Like you're doing the research for the course, but you're adding photos. And that's amazing. Like this four pictures I took in Cape Town when I was doing a project for my oceanography class. Um, next. And I, I also started to take pictures that maybe, you know, weren't so pretty, uh, pictures about environmental degradation as well. And I think that's when I really took this project a lot more seriously. And when I realized that, you know, there was a way for me to tell stories with other people, together with other people, to really, you know, share the sense of urgency that something needed to change, that something in our behaviors and the behaviors of our governments and leaders needed to change. So how... So all of this brought me to peace, but basically because a friend told me about the ship, a friend that had joined the year before, two friends actually, and they told me, um, you know, this is what the, the ship's about. This is where you'll get to travel. And I was like, this sounds amazing. Like, this is perfect for me. And as I was growing as a photographer, I felt like what I needed exactly was to meet people, to network with people and to listen to people. I had, you know, enough training on my own, but I, like I was saying, I needed to really connect and to really take all those things that I had so long perceived as local 
and try to, you know, get the global perception because everything is so interconnected. And Emily and I, we've been talking about this a lot throughout the summer, how, you know, things happening in Mexico, in the Patagonia, in Chile, in Japan, everything is so interconnected. And so that's why I wanted to join Peace Boat because of this passion for photography. So next one. And so I joined the Patagonia through the South America program, the Youth for the SDGs uh, South America program, where we traveled from Ushuaia in Argentina all the way up to Valparaíso, Chile. So it was me and other six young activists. We all jumped in the ship together in Ushuaia and traveled together for two weeks. We had a field trip in Ushuaia. We went up a glacier called Glaciar Marcial. And then in Valparaíso, we had workshops with Litter of Light. I'll show you a couple of pictures in a second. But we had all these experiences both in port as well as on board the ship. So it was a very dynamic experience for us. And for me, and I know for uh, several in the group, it was the first time in the Patagonia. Like, we just didn't know what to expect. We had seen pictures, we had seen like documentaries, but it was definitely um, new for us. So next one. This is, uh, she's, uh, that's Carol. She's one of the youth for the SDGs that joined in my trip. And this is, I, I love this picture because you can see her face. It's just pure joy. Like we were just so happy to be there. We were just so excited. Um, the tour was, it was led by one of the community members. He had so much, like a lot of experience, you know, traveling and uh, with the glaciers. So he was sharing all this super valuable information with us. So it was a very educational trip. And next. And yeah, in this one, you can see the Glaciar Marcial, which is, it's kind of shaped like a bat in a way. And we hiked up almost all the way up there. We couldn't actually reach the actual glacier, but we got pretty close. And the weather wasn't, you know, it wasn't the best, but we really made it work. It was raining and it was super cloudy, but it was an amazing trip. And I think um, something that clicked as we were hiking up is, you know, the, the tour guide was telling us how the glacier was so much smaller now than it was in the past and how he had all these really um, not very optimistic predictions for the future. Um, next. So as we were hiking up, we were seeing, you know, uh, what he was saying, how because of all the melting, the extreme melting, you know, the glacier was getting smaller. And we also had these areas with streams, like permanent streams, and then areas which were super green. So um, these changes in the, you know, in the geology, in the geography, they look pretty nice to us, but they were, a, they were a sign that something was changing and something was different from decades before. Next. And this picture, I, I think these two pictures are amazing because they were taken in the same location, like they were at the glacier site, but the one on the left, the forest, it was sort of like at the bottom where we were starting hiking. And then the one on the right, it's when we were getting closer to the actual glacier and you can see the erosion and it's just rocks, but it looks, I, the picture on the right, I remember telling all the people in the hike and Emily remembers this, we were just saying how this didn't look like earth, like how this felt like a different planet because of the rocks and the haze and everything was just so different. So it was a very impactful trip for me, at least, because I had never been in a place like that before. Next. And this is uh, Sara, one of the youth for the SDGs who joined in the trip uh, when we reached the end of the path. Um, and yeah, but by this point, it was raining. It was getting a bit chaotic. But again, we were so excited to have reached to that point and to, you know, really be that close to the glacier. Um, next. And this is another picture of the changes I was telling you about how um, these streams were forming and how there was a lot of melting. And again, the contrast of the greens and the grays, it was pretty impressive to see in person. Next. And this was once, you know, we got on the ship and we were getting closer to the glaciers um, uh, along the way up to Valparaíso. And again, it was a very impactful experience. I think a lot of the people on the ship had already seen them before, but most people were just seeing them for the first time. And so it was an, an incredible experience to be on the on deck with all the people in the ship and seeing some people taking pictures, some people like crying, some people just laughing, some people singing, just like their reactions at these glaciers and the eye sheets generated on the people. It was an amazing experience because it was just such a magnificent view. And again, for some people, it was difficult. Like some people were just staring and some people looked not sad, but definitely, you know, they were they were thinking and they were seeing. And, and I remember we were saying, what if this is the last time we're seeing this in this, like in this shape? Like, what if this is the last time we are seeing the glaciers like this? And so those reflections were really important and just core to the experience at Peace Boat, you know, having this understanding of time and place and our role in, in it. Um, next. 
again, some more pictures of when we were traveling uh, on the ship and there was just so many mountains and really no no communities in this area. But again, we can see across there. So just seeing just all of these little details uh, in the geography was really amazing. Um, next. And this is a picture of the youth. Like we were saying, we led a lot of workshops. I led a workshop on conservation photography and scuba diving. Um, they also led workshops on mental health, entrepreneurship, education. So it was a very, very fun experience for all of us to share that with the community on the ship and to all learn from each other. Um, next. And this is when we got to Valparaíso, uh, when we had the workshops with, with the workshops with Litter of Light um, for sustainable energy production and use. So the picture on the left is just when we docked in, in Valparaíso and you can see the um, some of the members of the ship just walking around. And it's it's a really amazing sight. All of a sudden, um, the entire city gets filled with all the people on the ship and you see your friends and the people you were eating with and everyone's asking for directions. And it's just a really, the fun, like the first day, it's, it's really fun how everyone just sort of gets into the city and figures out a way around. And the picture on the right, it's uh, from one of the workshops we led in one of the communities in Valparaíso. And again, using all this low cost technology to have you know, sustainable energy solutions for communities that were having trouble accessing you know, energy for, for lighting, for cooking, et cetera. Next. And yeah, there's two more pictures of the workshops uh, with members of the ship and members of the community. And again, these workshops were so useful because just as we were transitioning from the glaciers and all these reflections and all this you know, feeling of powerlessness at times, to then reach uh, Valparaíso and lead these workshops and train so many people into sustainable energy use. I think for us as youth scholars, it was an amazing transition because we really had that first impact of that sense of urgency. And then we right away started working on it, started sharing workshops. And then when we got to Valparaíso, we also went to CEPAL in Santiago, the UN CEPAL, and we shared our experiences. So it was a very, it was, it was an amazing process to really navigate all of that in a few weeks. So that's, I think for me, Peace But was a beautiful experience in that sense, a beautiful learning experience and an opportunity to keep working on my photography and to really think of where I wanna go further with conservation photography. Thank you so much, Sylvia. I'm, you know, so impressed always by our Youth for the SU Scholars, but even a really great example not only as a leader for the sustainable development goals but also through your photography and conservation photography is a really important topic because not many people realize that you can use photography mm -hmm. as a tool to make a change and to really uh, document what's happening around the world and to document nature and all the things that are happening um, during these times that are constantly changing so thank you so much for sharing your work i'm really excited to have you join us and I just saw that someone donated $100 to our campaign. So I want to encourage those donations. Keep donating right now if you're watching. Please donate. Um, make a donation on our GoFundMe page or on our Facebook page, our global crowdfunding campaign. If you donate today during this one hour session, we have about 15 minutes left. Um, we will be sending you some beautiful photos from our photographers that are with us here. So thank you so much for those who have donated. And please, if you're watching, if you haven't donated, please donate now. That's the timing right now. Um, and I would just like to say, uh, Sylvia, you've been really amazing. And um, as a youth leader as well, um, let's start with one question for you, because it's your first time on the Peace Boat, but you, it's not the first time you sailed. You've actually been on another boat. Tell us about your experience sailing. Where have you been before? And how is Peace Boat a little bit different where you've been before? Sure. Um, well, when I started as a scuba diver in Canada in high school, I I went to UWC in Canada and that was my first time getting sort of acquainted with ships in general. And when I realized that I I would get like really seasick really easily. <laughs> but that's when I realized I really loved the ocean and I wanted to, again, keep scuba diving and everything. But then when I was almost finishing high school, I applied for a program called Semester at Sea. And that's the program I was referencing for that semester that I traveled around the world. And, you know, very similar in, in the sense of, you know, traveling to different destinations and taking courses and sort of um, connecting uh, what, what I was learning in class with the locations that I was visiting. And that was what really sparked my interest in in traveling with a purpose. And like you, like Stacey was saying, was saying, you know, just not like a tourist, but to really, you know, set out on a project and work with communities. So um, that was my first experience, like, I guess, traveling in a bigger ship and then. 
um, I joined Peace One. That was my second time living on a ship for for a while. Although all the semester at sea was uh, four months, so that was that was the experience in terms of um, being in a ship. But Peace One was you know still two weeks, and I still really enjoyed it. And I'm hoping I can join in the future for longer. <laughs> I think you're muted, Emily. We can hear you, Emily. Yes, I was gonna say um, that it's really great to have you have joined us on board, but I hope we can all sail together again, James and Stacey and Sylvia, all of us on board. Um, and right now we're just watching a little bit of a slideshow um, of Stacey's photos. These are some of the most, um, I would say impactful and impressive images. Stacey, do you wanna introduce this slideshow just a little bit? Um, yeah, I just, uh, this is, this is just a, a, a kind of a random collection of pictures um, from the, um, you know, spanning um, 14, 15 years that, uh, you know, between my first time on the ship and last time on the ship, um, uh, that just uh, are, are here to kind of contextualize a little bit more um, what the Peace Boat experience looks like. Um, you know, the kind of the, the personal interactions, the kind of things that you'll do in ports, like, uh, you know, um, participating in demonstrations or, um, uh, you know, advocacy events, uh, you know, meetings on deck, um, uh, the kind of people that you'll encounter. So um, the fun things that you'll do, the, uh, the work that you'll do. Um, uh, so hopefully, you know, while we're kind of, uh, uh, you know, having some questions here, um, this will fill in some of the gaps about what the Peace Board experience looks like. Thank you, Stace. And I just have to say again, like really, um, your photos have been such an inspiration for all of us while you've been traveling on Peace Boat. And um, there's so much to tell about the Peace Boat stories, but it's really hard to capture three months in <laughs> any photos, but there's so much that's going on every day. So I just want to ask, uh, let's start with James and Stacey, if you could just tell us about a little about what it really inspired you to continue working with Peace Boat, or what was like one of the moments you were like, this is really um, a Peace Boat moment, what you really want to capture in your images and also just the storytelling. Um, I'm sure we've all had a lot of those moments where we're like, this is really what we want to work towards. But um, James, let's start with you. Tell us one of those moments that you had like a, a Peace Boat moment, whether it was through photography or just on board, one of those moments. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, there are so many, obviously, and, you know, I could go on and on, but for me, Latin America was always a, a massive issue, you know, it, it was, every time we got to Latin America, I was just like, who are the guest speakers, who are they going to, you know, because this is something that a lot of people don't realize, like, you know, while, while at sea, there's, there's artists, there's uh, activists, there's journalists, um, you know, who come on board and, you know, from the previous port until the one that, that we, you know, we're going to go to. And they talk about a lot of the issues. For example, one, one that, that I really remember is, um, you know, in, in Valparaíso in Chile as well, how, you know, I got, I got a chance to go to, you know, the, the, this former jail, you know, that had been used as a torture center. And we were speaking with an end torture group and you know some of them have been there and now it was turned actually into into like artist residency quarters and I, you know i was blown away i was like this is amazing you know that this is happening and and you know like i, I want to you know like to think that something like this is happening here i thought it was really important you know to share that knowledge you know or or having you know also spoken with like some former um you know um fmln um you know guerrilla uh, commanders, like two women who came on board from El Salvador, they also impacted me, you know, so much in, in their, their humanity. And one of them actually invited me to come work with her. And that was sort of like what planted that deed of, hey, maybe I should, you know, go to Central America. It didn't work out at the end. And I ended up following she's, uh, you know, suggestions and going to, to Guatemala. But uh, yeah, I mean, there was just so many moments. And, and spending time on board with, with a lot of these people who, you know, me as a, um, as an international staff member, you know, a lot of them would come on board for three, four or five days and they wouldn't speak any, you know, obviously no Japanese, no experience in Japanese, with Japanese culture. Uh, and, you know, and so it was, you know, you got really close, really fast to people that were doing some unbelievable things in this world. You know, I just, you know, last one, you know, I want to get an amazing like experience on port that I always remember is like Gabby, 
uh, who is uh, this world famous anti-nuclear activist in, uh, in Tahiti. And, you know, he was just like such a, you know, like a bit serious, you know, you know, he's a little bit older, you know, he's been, he has a lot of experience. But I remember that uh, one time we had a big group and we didn't fit in the bus. And, and he basically looked at me and, and Yuki Hirayama, who was uh, the, 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 the director in that, in that particular cruise. And he said, you guys come with me. And he had a little pickup, a little like really old battered down pickup truck. You know, and, 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 and we looked inside and it was completely full. So he's like, hop on the back. So we're like, okay. So, you know, and then, and then before we know it, he stops. He stops my liquor, you know, at a little convenience store and he buys us a six pack. And he's like, if you're going to see my island, you're going to see it like this in the back of my truck and you're going to have a beer. And we were like, wow. I mean, you know, Gabby, this world renowned anti nuclear activist is like such a, like, you know, cool, normal, down earth person. And that was the kind of experience that you could have with, with these people. And, and I mean, it was just like really, you know, uh, like pretty amazing. I was gonna say yes, Gabriel Tetirahi. Gabby, he's one of the most amazing guest speakers that we've had on the Peace Boat. Um, I think when he was in his teens, he saw the nuclear explosions um, in Tahiti. And, and it, you know, when he's watching the mushroom clouds, he tells the story about how he was changed as a young person and why he's working for nuclear disarmament is so important. And that's one of the Peace Boat's main topics that we work on as well. Um, and he's been an inspiration, I think, to all of us. I think every, single staff member of Peace Boat who's been on board with Gabby has has their lives changed by him. So thank you for sharing that. I think he's a he's a very memorable person for all of us. And um and also it's about indigenous leadership as well. It's not only about, you know, learning about these issues, but about taking um, you know, propriety over these issues that we think are important. Let's do something about it. So taking action is also really a part of Peace Boat's work. It's not only like learning and studying about these issues, but then doing something about it. So that's really great. Um, and I, I agree, Gabby is definitely one of our most inspirational speakers. So that's a good memory. And Stacy's been on board with Gabby as well, but Stacy, tell us about one of your, you've had so many, but tell us about one or two of your most memorable moments on Peace Boat. Um, okay, I'll, um, and to be honest, I, 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 no joke was going to go um, with Gabby. Um, and talk about <laughs> that um, because because the, the contrast of what you what you think you the image that you have of Tahiti before meeting somebody like that and then after you meet that person um, and tons of people like him is just a, a galaxy universe is different um, so you know I, I really want to go to Tahiti again but it has nothing to do with bungalows over the water and all that stuff um, very different reasons and I think much better reasons but um if I look at look at one um, really inspiring thing, it's not actually one of the places I went, or um, but it has to do with a, a lot of the a lot of the people who make Peace Boat go. So early on, um, again, I had like this idea of what kind of people worked at a uh, you know a, a peace organization or a nonprofit organization, but. Peace Boat is really driven um, so much by really young people, um, mostly Japanese people or say students from other countries who, who are studying in Japan and then they get uh, become involved in Peace Boat. Um, but a lot of these people um, are, let's say, young people who somehow are not fitting in with mainstream um, real well, um, even you know, coming from backgrounds in like bike, you know, like the youth biker gangs in Japan, or you know, kind of rough and scrappy backgrounds. Um, and you know, me, I you know, coming from California and uh, having my nice little university degree, and us, you know, in Japan, and you know, kind of getting the inflated ego, and absolutely being humbled by people who had never finished high school and um, people who had never even finished elementary school. You know, and this. Um, just transformed my understanding of what really matters in terms of who a person is, um, what our capacities are. Um, and so Peace Boat, really one of the valuable things that I see it as is a place where um, these people who are not somehow fitting on the mainstream track um, have, you know, so many of them have found themselves, uh, you know, in Peace Boat on a voyage around the world. They, you know, maybe their parents throw them on there and say, okay, well, anyways, you know, go go on this trip and figure your stuff out get squared away and um 
and boy, do they ever, but it's not, you know, maybe in the direction that the parents wanted them to do, but rather it has to do with making like, you know, making this um, crazy, amazing, astonishing organization go around the world um, and using that, you know, um, that very young, but incredible creativity and energy and stuff like that. And so um, very much why I think Peace Boat, um, it's so important for Peace Boat to uh, continue. Um, and the value that it brings to so many different kinds of people. So that's my uh, that's my little uh, inspired uh, component among many. No, it's so true. And honestly, you know, Peaceful was started in 1983 by four Japanese university students, and it's always been youth led and focused on young people and their vision for a better future. And so if we can imagine it, we can do it, right? And so getting that energy and getting those young people's ideas together has made Peace Boat what it is today. And I think, Stacey, like you said, there's so many people on the Peace Boat, whether it's staff or young people traveling or others, um, who are just looking to make something new and to create something really special. And that's what happens on the Peace Boat Voyages. So um, I myself also have been around the world six times in the boat and it's life changing every time I've ever traveled with a boat. It's been so important just to like, recalibrate and see, you know, what kind of things are happening around the world and how we can make a difference together on every basic level to the, to the grander scale. Um, and Sylvia, I want to ask you as well, what was your peace felt moment? Um, we have about five minutes left, but I want to ask you, what was your peace felt moment? And then we'll have like a wrap up comment from everybody at the end. Sure. I, I think for me, it was, um, one of them was what I commented about the glaciers and just being on the deck and just seeing people reacting to the glaciers. I think that's going to be imprinted in my memory forever. But I also feel like um, just all the fun stuff that happens in the ship, like especially after dinner, like it was really fun going to the karaoke place, um, seeing all the like fun trivia games and getting to be with people of all ages and just sort of relaxing and having fun and talking about many different things. I feel like um, the workshops in the morning and then having these interactions that were, you know, you, you know, they were unscripted. They were just so natural. It was it was really fun. And it was really interesting. And and just seeing all these people uh, trying to speak Spanish with me and then English and then just mixing languages as well. It was really fun. Um, just getting that sense of an international community in such a, you know, relatively small space. Right. It, it's a big ship. But at the end of the day, you have people from all across the world in one ship like um, and I think for, for all the youth uh, on my group, I remember we were just so happy to be dancing and, and singing with all of these amazing people and just having conversations of almost any topic imaginable because everyone was so open. I think that was that that's the beauty of Peace Boat, that I think that everyone that joins is so open, so receptive to meeting people and to learning. And it's always from a place of, you know, I want to understand you and not judge you. And I think that for me was uh, the sort of the lasting memory, just feeling so accepted and listened to and, and cared for. And, you know, even, even though I was only there for two weeks, I think it felt like, like a month easily. <laughs> so true. No, we're so grateful to have you on board. And I'm just really excited to have you as part of this program as well. Um, and I just want to mention, we have three minutes left. So anyone who hasn't donated, please donate. <laughs> Crowdfunding campaign is live. You can get photos by Stacy and James have donated their photos for you. We'll send them to you by post. Um, and in these last few minutes that we have, um, let's just have one last closing comment from each of the photographers that we have with us today. It's been a really important time for all of us to join together um, and support Peace Boat. It's a really challenging time for us as an organization because we're not able to sail during this global pandemic. So. We have a lot of programs that we're doing online, virtual events, um, but bringing together our community and keeping building that, that network that we have around the world. So let's start with James. Do you have one last closing comment or anything you'd like to tell everyone? <laughs> no, well, um, I mean, I realize that, you know, right now everybody's struggling a bit, you know, with, uh, with the pandemic. I mean, it's, it has not, it hasn't been and it won't be economically, you know, easy for anyone. But I mean, if you can, this is definitely, you know, a great project that, that really should be, you know, should be kept alive and, and kept going. And I mean, you know, just go into the website, look into it. I mean, look into the Peace Boat US office, speak with Emily, uh, because this really has become like a launching pad for thousands and thousands of people, you know, to to make change in, in many different levels in many different ways. And, 
And I mean, you know, I am so incredibly thankful. Everybody's always tired of me. You know, oh, you're going to talk about the boat again. You know, and everywhere I go, all my friends make fun of me. But, you know, they just they just can't understand. I mean, this has been probably the, the best education I've had in my life. And, you know, I did three full cruises and then I was invited as a guest speaker, uh, you know, and I uh, you know, every few weeks come by that I'm thinking, I wish I could go on it again, even if it's just for a couple of days, <laughs> you know, so that's it. Thank you everybody for showing up and it's, you know, great seeing you all. Thank you. Stacey, how about you? Um, sure, I would just say, if I could, uh, just to make, um, if I have to pick one thing, it is that um, on this earth, I think Peace Boat is one of the most accomplished strongest most ambitious organizations that exists and it has survived many times where you know anybody would think oh no like an organization like this can't make it through this economic disaster or sars or the war broke out and there's peace boats still sailing around and you know but this organization you know like i said earlier driven by the power of these young people who to a little to some degree aren't that concerned about the rules and the expectations and things like that. And that's the power that has made Peace Boat survive and go from this little, you know, a little one-off experiment back in 1983 to one of the most accomplished um, organizations in the world now, including, you know, the uh, ACO being a co-recipient of the um, Nobel Peace Prize. And so um, this is an organization that it really, really, really needs help now um but the benefit is 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 guaranteed um uh for as long as peace boat continues to sail um so it, it just i just cannot uh, stress that enough so everybody please and uh, thank you thank you stacy you're so right though honestly i mean i worked with peaceful after states was already working with us um for many years and i was just so inspired by all the people i met and it's continued to be the most amazing, like you said, Stacey, accomplished and certified organization working through all these hard times and um, there's nothing like it in the world. So Sylvia, how about you? As a as a new uh, Youth for Lessons Scholar and coming up member of Peace Vote, tell us about your um, last message. Sure, I mean, I was I was able to join Peace Vote because of a scholarship. So I think that's something that I'll, you know, I'll never forget and I'm really thankful for and I know that you know, the money for those uh, scholarships comes from many different people. So um, I would like to see more, you know, young students like me join Peace Vote and like James was saying, you know, take that as a launching pad to continue working with Peace Vote, but also, you know, engage in their own projects and initiatives. So I really, I really hope that whoever, you know, has a chance to um, donate because it's a project that's also been growing so much and innovating, you know, it's innovating with the eco ship as well. So there's definitely a lot for the future that, you know, um, it's really exciting and it's really innovative. So yeah, I, I hope that people consider this as an opportunity to support a cause that, you know, has a, a really international impact. And I will also add a few pictures uh, for the gifts. <laughs> so yeah. if that if that's motivating. <laughs> yes, and thank you so much to everybody who's watching online. I saw we had a $100 donation, a $500 donation. Thank you so much to everybody who's tuning in. This has been an amazing, amazing um, kick to our fundraising campaign. So thank you so much. Um, and I just want to also highlight, this is not the end. This is one event of a series of many events that we have coming up. So we also have events coming up this week with our colleagues from Europe, bringing in around the world with Peace Boat. Our next port of call is going to be next Friday, August 14th, 7 to 8 p.m. Tokyo time. 12 to 1 p.m. Central Time with my colleague Yasna Bastik, who is going to be arriving at our next event. So please tune in and please watch our series of events. We're going to be doing this every week, twice a week, so that everybody can tune in, learn about Peace Vote, see what we're doing, and learn about the activities that you can join, even online. Uh, we hope to broaden our community and bring our already close community together. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to the photographers who joined us today. Thank you to everyone who's donated today. And let's continue building a more peaceful and sustainable world together. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Let's bring our photographers back. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Cheers.